Good morning everyone and welcome to another out and about video and today or this morning we're out over in Darwin just on the outskirts of Blackburn and we're here at Darwin Cemetery um, now we're here for two reasons one mainly just have a have a scout around and uh, see the old graves and what stories some of them hopefully have to tell but I also came across this morning before we came out the story of a soldier named John Thornhill who uh, is a bit of a local hero for these parts uh, simply because it was discharged from the army back in the early 1900s three times and it's not often you hear stories of one individual soldier obviously being discharged that many times but he um, apparently was a bit of a restless soul and after being called up to serve, I think it was in the Boer War, um, he, he did his time there, so to speak, until a serious uh, accident basically prevented him from uh, serving his country any longer. I think he uh, something happened with his hand, it became badly mangled in some incident and he was discharged there on from uh, uh, from his uh, call of duty if you will and he came back recharged his batteries but he became restless as I've said and uh, yeah he wanted to uh, carry on fighting for his, his country but we'll get more into that story as uh, as we move along and hopefully we can find the headstone that's, that was erected not not too long ago I think only a few, a few years ago but yeah we're here at Darwin Cemetery um, I'll take you guys with us and we'll have a look around and see um, what interesting stories we might be able to, uh, to find from here So I just look down on the ground, and I keep saying this in all the videos, or a lot of videos do. Look down below under your feet, and you might see things, but look at this. The original uh, cobblestones. I mean, a lot of it has obviously been covered over throughout the years. But you can see the pathway and the original features. So yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll make our way up to this area, because this, this is the older part of the cemetery. Um, and there is quite a lot of interesting uh, features around here. Now look at this uh, this feature. Okay, the wall has given way. You can see the fence still on it. But look at the little path into this uh, segment. We'll have a look up because I just think with things like this where you see structures in place, I kind of feel like these were important graves or for somebody important and who are the grave doth light eternal play love beckons hear her whispering say my light alone beloved leads to a never dying day yeah I can't really make much of that out there is some names but very difficult to read but yeah again on the floor you can see the, the railings all around us which have all completely uh, not gone but uh, given way haven't they to, to nature it just goes on all the way around to this side as well all right let's make our way out of this little area without falling And 
again. Another important looking, another looking uh, memorial. Timothy Yates Nuttall, 1853 to 1920, and Sarah Nuttall, his wife, March 16th, 1936. But yeah, this is Darwin Cemetery, and as I said, there's quite a lot of old, old features. It is uh, a unique place, to be fair. So the story of John Farnell, and I've got to, uh, I've got to give some credit to. Um, I think it was a chap called Tony Foster who did some in-depth research into John Farnell's life, and especially during the war. So um, what I'll do, I'll put a link down below to where I've got this information from because I don't want to take credit for it. I'm just going to uh, touch upon what uh, Mr Foster said in his article. But yeah, um, John Farnell, as I said earlier, I think he was age 19 when he went to war, but he was wounded, as I said earlier, in the Boer War, and he struggled with a lot of illnesses, apparently, um, during the war years. Um, I think he was 19 when he signed up to the East Lanx Regiment, and after two years, obviously, in the war, he was discharged due to being unfit. And like I said earlier at the start, he um, something happened in which one of his hands was badly mangled, badly disfigured. Um, he also married at a relatively young age to a lady called Mary Elizabeth, I think it's pronounced Gavagan or Gavagan. And whilst, I don't know if it was whilst before he joined the regiment or it was after he was discharged, I'm not overly sure. But he worked as a labourer at a paper mill close to where he lived in Astley Street. And I'm out of breath now. Ooh, right, we'll carry on walking around the cemetery. And we'll get into uh, John's life during the war as we do so. Now the thing with John was, after being discharged from the services, if you will, he got so fed up at home. And like I said, I'm not sure if he worked as a labourer in one of the mills after he was first discharged for the first time or it was before, I think it was after. But uh, he became extremely restless. He became fidgety. And he just wanted to serve his country. This is how brave a man he was. He knew it'd be difficult uh, because obviously of his mangled hand and obviously it meant he couldn't really do too much. But by February, things had, uh, had come to a head and um, when the Great War erupted, he just couldn't sit at home and do nothing. So yeah, he, um, he applied again to serve for his country. Now, I've just come across this strange looking feature. Now, if you look at the wall, all the way down, you'll notice two posts, one there, one here and obviously it's got like a a piece of stone sticking out of the wall to put your feet on likewise there you've got one two three four and then you've got one there five but yeah definitely gate posts and this has been filled well at some point over the years 
but it's this bit what if anybody knows down below what this could have been um i can understand if there was another segment here maybe it was i don't know was 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 there a pathway across here maybe i can't really exp i can't really just work out what what's going on here i mean yeah see these are wood these are wooden i thought they might be stone but I'm thinking, is this a pathway through, and then there should be something else here? This would built higher up. I don't know. I can't. I can't work it out. Mainly because of the gate post being on the side, and it's central. When you look at the actual wall, the gate posts are pretty much central in the middle. One there, one there, and then obviously you got the walkway here. So yeah, if anybody can possibly work out what what was going on here uh, just comment down below because like you said there's definitely a pathway but should that have been a continuation maybe over here yeah I'd be interested to know if anybody knows what's going on there right we'll make our way through the rest of the cemetery and we'll uh, carry on with the story of John Farnhill So at the age of 35, John tried again um, to sign up to the to the army, but it was always ignored because of the disability, obviously to his hand, which you know is, is it's understandable. But um, a month later, it was in France, believe it or not. Um, and he was the driver, well a driver, he was a driver for the uh, the Army Service Corps or the ASC but again he wasn't in action for too long um, and I, I, like I said I am reading these notes as best as I can written by Mr Foster again link down below where you can obviously read the full story itself but from all accounts, um, he lasted, what, 12 months or so? Or was it less than that? And he ended up being admitted back to hospital, but this time suffering from lumbago. This was around about, uh, I don't know, middle of the year perhaps. But then, it was, uh, it was around November the same year, he ended up in yet another hospital, not suffering from lumbago, but uh, tuberculosis this time. But he wasn't one for quitting, um, as you'll find out again, hopefully as we get towards where um, Mr. Farnhill is interred. But yeah, I mean, look at uh, some of the views here at uh, Darwin Cemetery. I'll just take you over this wall here. Because you just have to look up at the forest. Amazing place when you look at it and when you get here. Now what I like about doing these stories is especially one like today where I just came across a story of John uh, Farnhill earlier this morning before we set off and uh, obviously I don't know the full history, I don't know anything about it uh, it's just what the notes I've, I've found th this morning and like I said all credit to uh, Mr Foster but um, yeah, it, it, coming to these places on the spur of the moment taking you guys with us seeing what's on our doorstep um, looking around and especially when you come to graveyards and cemeteries you, you can see some of the graves and then if you just take your time and look at the actual inscriptions on the headstones you'll come across some interesting stories um, I'm not entirely sure what famous residents are here interred at uh, Darwin Cemetery uh, but it's, it is a place that feels unique um, it's got I can't, it's got a special feel to it I mean the pathways 
for a start just meander on and on and on um, in fact we'll go down to this one because there's some war memorials down here we we'll won't be able to find Far Hills headstone uh, but yeah um, I, I love doing these videos for you guys because like I said I find new information and new stories um, and I hope you find these videos interesting as well they're never scripted a lot of these videos will come out they're not scripted um, I just try to memorize the stories we've covered on daysofhorror.com and hopefully put that into the videos sometimes I make mistakes um, I might say the odd place name or the odd date which is wrong but I'm not one for what's the word I'm looking for for going back re-recording um, I like them to be raw you know to the point and if I do make mistakes, general mistakes, I do apologise and people can easily comment down below and tell me where I've gone wrong. Um, and I never take offence at anything like that. So yeah, so um, do this yourselves, you know, get out, um, take a phone camera, take whatever, um, do some videos. And I'd, I'd be interested to see where you guys live and some of the places like this where, where you may be. And, you know, tell me the story, you know, choose a subject, choose a person because uh, I think not just me but I think our viewers would also like love to it because I can easily upload them to Days of Horror YouTube channel and uh, credit the people who have been out and about doing it just tag me in Days of Horror podcast or Chris it's up to you how you want to do it and I'll gladly upload them to our channel but give credit to uh, to uh, you guys you know because that's what it's all about it's a community isn't it it's like a it's like a family we've got going at the moment we've nearly hit 400 subscribers so yeah so I do thank each and every one of you but I keep looking, <laughs> I keep looking to this grave here. Um, it's caught my eye mainly because of the moss, and I think it's going to be an old one, is it? Maybe not actually. 1977, so it's not one of the oldest, but yeah, it caught my eye. Anyway, we're going to carry on going now because these are the old war memorials, and we might be able to find Farn Hills um, final resting place. So as we come to this side of the cemetery or the graveyard, we actually find. John Thornhill's final resting place and just look how well maintained this plot is and you know further back when I said he was a driver while serving in France if you look at the headstone it actually says M stroke 349604 driver J Thornhill Royal Army Service Corps, 4th of December 1918, aged 39. In honour, gratitude and love we remember. Yeah, so the final resting place of John Farnell. And you know when I said his wife, um, was it Mary Elizabeth Gavagan? I, I don't know if this is one of his relatives. In memory of John Gavagan from the staff and work people of WPM Limited, Orchard Mill 1939. Um, yeah, but I'll put a picture of John over the top of this, um, of this shot, somewhere to this side, and we'll pay our respects to this great man and this hero of Darwin. Somebody who just wouldn't uh, sit still at home even though being discharged. Absolutely amazing fella. So from what I'm reading, um, John was ill for many months. Um, I think it was in June 1916 when he was finally discharged from the army for a second time. Um, but the tuberculosis had left him really weak, lethargic and obviously as you would expect. 
but you know it, like I said he was such a fighter he just couldn't sit still he just wanted to fight for his country and I think it was November 1917 the following year he again joined the Army Service Corp or the ASE where he qualified as a lorry driver as obviously the headstone shows Royal Army Service Corps 4th of December 1918 age 39 uh, where it says driver um, but he wasn't in it for long what five months maybe around about April he began coughing up blood um, the TB had obviously taken its toll and kind of returned with a vengeance um, and you've got to remember it was two years in 1916 when he had tuberculosis but he never recovered so obviously he was sent back to England in August 1918 um, at which time I think I mean I don't know the wars at all but from what I'm uh, what I've read and what I'm reading it says the Germans were on the run after their final offensive earlier that year had collapsed and again these are notes by Mr Foster um, but yeah, he arrived back in England and he went to London and his, con his condition was always being assessed. But when he was finally discharged from the army for the third time in October, he came home and he spent the next two months here before finally succumbing and passing away on December the 4th, 1918. Just a couple of weeks after the armistice, he was 39 years old. Poor chap. Did everything for his country and the... Uh, succumb to tuberculosis but yeah the Darwin hero a true hero absolutely amazing I'm glad I found this story today guys and what I'll do I might have to do a, a deeper in-depth um, story on on John Thornhill for the Days of Oreo website just like I said people like this and this is what the website's about it's about not just things that happened back in the days where it was horrific and it was murder and it was uh, obviously death in strange circumstances we also honor and respect the heroes of our time and I don't think you're gonna find a, a bigger hero than what John Thornhill obviously was rest in peace fella Eventually, obviously, after the death of John, his wife Mary was left to bring up five children all on her own. Um, and I think her, her sister, Margaret, married John's elder brother. Um, it does say in the article that they had 16 children. I don't know if that is Margaret who had 16 children or a combined total of 16 children, but still, uh, poor Mary was, um, was brought to, to raise the five children on their own. But um, as I've just touched upon, what I'm going to do, I'm going to write, I think I'm going to write this up. I'm going to uh, look into John Thornhill's history as best as I can um, and tell the tale in a much better and detailed way. Because it's not often I come across stories like John, and especially the hero that he was. And it's just great utmost respect for, for people like John and obviously other soldiers who fight bravely for this country and still do to this day. Nothing but up, utmost respect for the, a lot of them. Um, yeah, so I think I'll do that. I think I'm going to uh, look into uh, John Farnell's story a little bit more in depth over these next coming months, maybe. But uh, yeah, this is Darwin Cemetery. I mean, it just goes on. I mean, you'll see in the distance these graves go on and on and on. Um, if you're ever over this way near Blackburn or Darwin, just come up for half an hour or an hour and have a look around yourselves. Um, and tell me your thoughts and tell me what you think of this place because I keep saying it, it it is a unique atmosphere when you come here it is a special place and uh, I, I'm not sure why I've not visited it more regular over the last couple of years of doing Days of Our and uncovering the stories that we do but yeah please do come over here and um, give your support to the Friends of Darwin Cemetery as well because they do a tremendous job here so just some more um, war graves Let's have a quick look at the names. I'm not going to pay any disrespect by naming them. I'm sure the families will appreciate that we remember these fallen heroes. But you've got Brett West Wormsley, Royal Regiment, age 25. He died in July 2007. So that's some quite modern one. A. Marshall, the East Lancashire is it Regiment, 1940, age 20. 
1941 age 26 GE Oddy J Banks 20th of August 1941 no age CS Kusil and he was aged 37 in 1944 another one 1944 aged 35 um, W Green and K Davis 1941 aged 18 18 years old but yeah fallen heroes and there's another one up here Is it A D E C Lewis? Nineteen forty five, age forty. But yeah, some nice headstones there to uh, to remember our heroes. Right, let's uh, go for a, another walk and see what else we can uncover. So we're here at the cemetery. There's also this nice little section dedicated to the war, or the wars, um, designed by the Friends of Darwin Cemetery and the local community, built by Stevenson Memorials. But yeah, we're going to have a walk around here. I don't think John Thornhill's name's on here, so I'm not sure if this was built after or before. Well, I presume it was built before, all this was built before. Uh, John's headstone was placed where we've just been but if you look at this over 9,000 Darwiners went to war and over 1,300 did not return with 70 buried in the cemetery wow when you think about that so there's a list of names I said John's name's not on there and again more names doesn't tell you the ages but again no foreign and it shows you the plots obviously where these poor lads have been buried And here's an interesting one for you all, the Spanish flu, 1918 to 1919. And we were talking about the C word over the last couple of years here, don't we? But I mean, look at this. The Spanish flu was a worldwide pandemic that killed between 50 to 100 million, of which 228,000 deaths occurred in the United Kingdom. The final course of the war and subsequent peace treaties were influenced by the pandemic. But similar to this, what we've got now, came in three waves. March, September, January. I mean, look at that one as well. Nearly 50% of the soldiers who were buried in this cemetery were victims of the flu. It's estimated around 213 Darwiners died due to the Spanish flu. Wow, that's amazing. Now look at this one. Prisoners of war. Over 300 men from Darwin were taken prisoners of war. These all died in captivity or returning to England. So, yeah. Conditions in the trenches, the peace. So 1,300 men and women from Darwin lost their lives in the Great War. 97% were in the army, 2% in the navy, 1% in the air force. So this is a, a really nice tribute to the fallen heroes. Obviously not just from Darwin itself, but obviously from all those who were involved in the wars um, things like this really respectful nice yeah I, I do like this um, right we're gonna head off out of the of the cemetery now um, like I said this was just a bit of a spur-of-the-moment video this morning but I'm so glad I, um, I've done it because 
we found, like I said, the final resting place of John Thornhill. Um, yeah, really interesting story, really pleased um, we came across that today. But before we go, one other interesting fact I want to just touch upon, and it's not in the cemetery, believe it or not, it's further down in Darwin. And it's a place called India Mill. Um, it's a story I think we might just touch upon in a future video. Uh, but it's about a chap called Eccles Shorrocks, I think it was, who built the mill, um, but there was some kind of, I don't know if it's some kind of um, disagreement with his family. But yeah, he had the mill built in the 1800s. But I think insanity or something occurred within the family, and especially with Eccles himself. Um, and basically, things went a bit, uh, a bit. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Without swearing. Yeah, it went a bit messy towards the end, and especially during the mill riots, the loom riots in the mid or early 1800s. But I'll touch upon that story. But the actual mill itself, further back, India Mill. Um, it's got a massive chimney and it's still there to this day and the great famous uh, Fred Dibner was known for visiting this place and climbing up said mill. This must be one of the best chimney stacks in all of England. It's almost 300 feet tall and built in 1877. Some of the stones at the top weigh as much as five tons each. And when they built it, it's reputed that they had a roast beef party on top. So yes, yeah, so there's a lot of interesting characters from Darwin and from around these parts and we'll uncover more stories, hopefully, and come to this place a lot more to uh, to find the uh, the final resting place, as I said, people, and uh, show our respects like we always do. So we're gonna head back to the car now. If you did like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, comment, like, subscribe, give me your thoughts on the story of John Farnhill. Um, big thanks to John Foster for, obviously, writing the article for which got me interested in John's story, John Farnhill's story. Like I said, I don't take credit for anything of what I've said uh, today. It's all Mr. Foster's work. I hope he doesn't mind me sharing it with you guys. Um, I'll put a link down below, like I said, to the original article. But in the meantime, from this really unique, special place here over in Darwin, I'd like to say take care, look after yourselves, and we will be back with other stories from the past and other videos just like today's. So until then, look after yourselves.